Hello, this is Aaron to you too, and uh, this is a continuation of our Dragon Warrior Randomizer enemy series. This one deals with Sherlock enemies, and we are going to get right to it. So, <clears throat> something to know about the Sherlock enemies is that there are 10 non Dragon Lord enemies that can appear in Sherlock. Seven of them are Spike tile fights, which you see in, or can be on spike tiles, which you can see in Hawksness, uh, the Swamp Cave, or also, and in Sherlock. Um, every enemy in this group is considered end game. So fight quality <clears throat> is high. Many have heavy resistances. Uh, and some are difficult all the way up to, to the end of the game. And some, honestly, can be more difficult than some things at the end of the game if they roll particularly bad things. So, <clears throat> excuse me. First enemy we're going to look at is the werewolf. Werewolf has 53 out of 70, 53 to 70 hit points, 95 XP, 7 out of 16 sleep resist and 7 times dodge. They have the second highest dodge rate in game, but no hurt resist. Uh, hurt more plus hurt is safer than swings <laughs> because, again, second highest dodge rate in the game, saying I have never trust your life for a swing on a werewolf. But otherwise, they are inefficient XP. Um, and what I mean by that is 95 experience is pretty low compared to the rest of the enemies here, and uh, you can do better. That's usually what it's that you can do better than this. But if you got them, you know, you take what you can get. Also, that 7 out of 16 sleep resist, you could put them to sleep early um, and be able to pick at them with maybe hurt, but they, they hit really hard. Uh, everything in this group hits pretty hard. So you gotta keep that in mind. Next enemy, we'll just scroll up a little bit here, is the Star Wyvern. They have 56 to 74 hit points, 105 experience, one out of 16 hurt resist, so just a little bit there, and eight out of 16 sleep resist. So they are, uh, they're hard to one shot with hurt more. They're fairly difficult to run from in game which is where you might consider sleep at low agilities. May consider sleep and run at low level. Until uh, 40 agility, that's actually uh, more efficient to cast sleep and run than just just run, or I should say more effective. Um, at 40 agility, you have a 50% chance to run from them. So at that point, it's better to just run. Um, can be a menace in the overworld. All of the uh, all of these enemies kind of have that tendency, but the Star Wyvern, for whatever reason, feels worse. Also, fairly inefficient to fight. The uh, 105 experience. Just if you look at the hit points and some of the enemies that are coming up, um, hit point total tends to be the most important thing, I think, when it comes to deciding things. Uh, until you're just, you know, end game, high strength, walloping stuff, so. Next enemy we have on the list is Wizard. They are weaker than Werewolf, Star Wyvern. But have, have maxed resistances. I didn't mention it. 49 to 65 hit points, 120 XP, 15 out of 16 hurt resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist, so... Uh, in the vanilla game, they cast a lot of spells at you, and you can't cast a lot of spells at it. You can stop spell it, um, <clears throat> which we haven't even touched in stop spell resist. That's probably its own video, although it's not too complicated to understand. It's just it would be weird to mention it every single time. They are a valuable fight if you can, if you have the AP to win. Yeah, you need to to actually have it, some of it strength to be able to take out a wizard. And uh, that's important. These first three enemies are Sherlock. Enemies that can be in Sherlock 
that cannot be on spike tiles. So everything else on this list is something that you will see on a spike tile um, when you decide, because most of the end game grinds are done with sp spike tiles. Sometimes you'll find that they're both terrible and you can find a better grind somewhere else. But the advantage of a spike is that the moment you move on to it, you fight. You don't have to, you know, hope for the 1 in 8 in a desert or worse, 1 in 16 or something in a forest to uh, fight an enemy. So, moving along. Axe Knight, 51 to 67 hit points, 130 XP, 1 in 16 heart resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist. Uh, best enemy to hurt more with uh, Magi Wyverns. And often the best spike tile possible with hurt more. So when you have Hurt More, if you have an Axe Knight Spike Tile, that is a magnet. If Unless there's something with the Axe Knight that makes them not appealing to fight. The uh, the fact that a Hurt More is something around 60%, I think, to kill to one-shot an Axe Knight. So for 5 MP, you're getting 130 XP. And 60% of the time, it takes one round. That's pretty huge. So even though there's enemies that give more experience... It's hard to beat this sort of efficiency, um, but we'll, we'll come across a couple of scenarios where it might be better to fight something else. So, Next enemy on the list, Green Dragon, 54 hit to 72 hit points, 135 XP, 2 out of 16 heart resist, 7 out of 16 sleep resist. Not as efficient as Axe Knights, but they are weaker. Only Spike Tile, you can reasonably defense break. Um, with silver shield, uh, you, it's usually you're not getting enough agility to uh, defense break. The next enemy on the list is actually the Axe Knight. Um, you need 88 defense to, to defense break a, a green dragon. When that happens, uh, swinging them down becomes incredibly efficient because they're not going to do a whole lot of damage to you unless they have you know some ability. Uh, can be taken out with early with sleep strats. It's a little bit unreliable, but it's possible. Uh, hurt more <laughs> into oblivion. Semi reliably or swung through with heals. If you're only swinging on an enemy, if you don't have hurt more, green dragon is actually more efficient than an axe knight. Because uh, it takes basically the same amount of hits, and um, you get more experience. Uh, even though the Green Dragon has a few more hit points, it has less agility, so it's a little bit easier to get through. Uh, they, I, I like to call them reliably unreliable, because that hurt resist is just a little bit more annoying than you would like. You start to see things pop up at 2 out of 16, more than 1 out of 16, um, as you, you would imagine odd-wise. But it's just a little annoying... Um, they, they are maybe the most interesting endgame grind, uh, just because there's so many different ways you can kind of go at them in different points where swinging is better when you don't have hurt more. When you have hurt more, hurt more is usually better than swinging, unless you don't have a lot of MP and they're not doing a lot of damage, like they have hurt or something, then you might want to actually swing. When you have a lot of defense, it's probably better to swing than to cast hurt more, unless you just need one level really quick. Like there's... It's a complicated decision when fighting green dragons more so than it is any other enemy here at the end of the game about how to approach them. <clears throat> uh, so Stoneman, we rate them uh, 102 to 135 hit points. It's a lot. 155 experience, 7 out of 16 hurt resist, and 2 out of 16 sleep resist. Two hurt mores usually kill them, but sleep is the big weakness. Uh, 2 out of 16 sleep resist is the the, the most, the, the easiest thing you're going to see here at the end of the game. Uh, can be taken down early by using sleep, but is rarely a good grind as their HP, hurt, resist, and relatively low XP value makes them perhaps the worst spike grind. And maybe I'll go over my actual ratings at the end, but Stone Man are... If you feel like you really need to get something, like an item or something, to elevate your position, and you see a Stone Man on the Spike Tile and Hawks, since that's usually a good thing, but you don't want to grind them. They're just something that you can take out reasonably early. 
Um, probably more reliable than the green dragon, even though it takes a lot more hits to get through. And you can't easily hurt more than, uh, or at least as easily as the green dragon. But um, they're just, yeah, they just take too long normally. Uh, even at end game, you know, stats, even with their low agility, you're usually three shotting them. You know, rarely it's better because just the hit points are too high. So, next enemy on the list is the blue dragon. 74 to 98 hit points, 180 experience, 7 out of 16 hurt resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist, uh, 2 hurt mores, always kill them, but only viable in clearing out as an early spike fight. So similar to Stone Man, except you can't put him to sleep. Um, 180 XP is one of the highest values in the game for an enemy, but efficiency matters um too high hp uh agility and is often one of the worst spike grinds you can you can do a blue dragon they're not terrible you can swing through them if you have a decent amount of attack power the problem is they just it's always it's like a heal more fight always unless they have something that's you know making them weaker they're just a bit of a drag Honestly, I rate them usually better than Stone Men, but that's it's it. Everything else on this list I consider to be more useful. It's just, eh, you know, <laughs> that's that's the Blue Dragon mantras. Eh. <laughs> so three left. The Golem, 115 to 153 hit points, 350 experience, 15 out of 16 hurt resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist, zero dodge. If 120 strength means. They can do 40 damage at 80 DP, same as Red Dragon. Um, they hit hard, but their defense power is slightly soft. And Fairy Flute is 100% effective at putting them to sleep. Um, considered a solid end game grind when not using the flute. Uh, but flute usage makes them an attainable spike fight or otherwise early on and XP is top tier. So Golem's a little tricky because if you, it's basically they lose in comparison to the red dragon unless you need to to use the fairy flute. Like if if you can't kill a red dragon, but with the fairy flute you could kill a golem, say you don't have heal more. Um but you have a decent amount of attack and you have heal or herbs or something that you can use, you know, after a fairy flute that will probably keep them from killing you on the next hit. Uh, Golem is pretty solid. So that's, um, uh, and it depends too. With the, uh, the training tournament, we have speed hacks on, which makes the flute play a lot faster. Um, I think it's the difference between like one and a half to two seconds to eight seconds. So it's pretty significant. Um, a, a difference there, which again makes it more appealing as a grind. But when it comes to actual standard races, golems are kind of right in the middle um, as far as grind stuff goes. And it, it just there's so many different situations that can impact them too. But mostly it's do you have heal more? Do you have to use the flute? Because if you don't have to use the flute, they're one or two swings more than a red dragon in the end game, which just makes them you know not quite as uh, tasty, I guess, a fight. All right, second to last enemy here, the Armored Knight. 75 to 99 hit points, 172 experience, one out of 16 hurt resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist, uh, hits hard, has high agility, and is second hardest enemy to run from. Uh, two hurt mores are usually enough to kill it but their XP feels low compared to the danger in fighting one. Usually hate to see them in Sherlock or really anywhere overworld. Just like, no, not these guys. So there is a, in standard, uh, red dragons, armor knights, and stone men, well, in both forms of the dragon lord, but usually don't worry about that, have a modifier applied to their agility that makes them harder to run from than normal. Um, 
which if you look at all the run numbers, and maybe I'll make a, a video specifically about that too, but uh, the, the numbers range from like, I think 42 agility is where you're 50-50 to run from a blue dragon. Then it's like 65 for a uh, metal slime, and then it's 86 for an armor knight. It's more than double as difficult to run. Like, your agility has to be so high to be able to run from an armor knight. It's pain in the butt. I find the best way to put it. They are annoying and vicious, and the same thing can be said for the red dragon. Stone Man has such low agility that you don't notice it quite as much. Now, for the, the training tournament, we have the easy Sharlock flag on, which reduces that value by 25%. But you're still looking at, you know, 60-some agility to be 50-50. It's still difficult, so... They're, um, they're probably the biggest losers when there was a, a change made to um, the XP values in the, uh, in the program when uh, 255 was no longer the cap because they were actually one of the better grinds. They were probably more efficient than a red dragon or a golem and their green dragons didn't exist. So they were actually like second <laughs> on the list. And I put them fifth now because I think a golem's generally better. I think a green dragon is definitely better. And a red dragon is so much better now than it was before. So, um, you know, otherwise as an enemy, eh, like, they're a bit annoying. Um, and one thing I learned in a tournament race, if you cast hurt more and they cast heal more, the correct response is to cast hurt more two more times. Um, because at that point, because the way heal more works, it'll heal them to max HP and your max, um, or probably will be pretty likely, your max uh, hurt more damage, can't push them back into heal more range. So, small trick I learned in my first tourney race. Now, the last enemy on the list is the red dragon. 80 to 160, 106, excuse me, hit points, 350 experience, 15 out of 16 hurt resist, 15 out of 16 sleep resist. They have 120 strength like golems, so prepare for big damage. They are also basically immune to all spells, have high agility, and have the special run factor that makes them insanely more difficult to run from than basically everything else in the game, but can be an amazing end game grind with that 350 experience, assuming you have heal more and enough HP AP. Uh, I was talking before about how we would rate different grinds. And uh, the way I see it is um, Red Dragons and Axe Knights are kind of pretty much on the same efficient, efficiency level. I generally am gonna prefer an Axe Knight, but if you have a Red Dragon with anything like remotely weakening them, like say they have hurt or hurt more is actually usually worse than their attack, especially with Erdrick's armor or the, the magic armor. Um, they tend to, to win out because 350 experience for what is usually four rounds because the, the average red dragon fight is usually two swings, a heal more and another swing at high AP. Um, uh, if you can do that, then that tends to be the best. But otherwise, red dragons are scary as heck to see. The first time you see a red dragon, you usually bite your lip and you're like, I'm going back to Lorik. This is, this is it. I'm dead. Which is what happens most of the time. So uh, good to keep that in mind. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Again, if I, if I were to rate the grinds, um, if that's your focus, I would say Axe Knight or Red Dragon is probably the best. Green Dragon situationally can be great, but usually rank at third. Golem's Fourth, with the Fairy Flute and Speed Hacks, it might actually be better than the Green Dragon. Um, just, it's so volatile, depending on how long the Fairy Flute keeps them asleep. And then I would say Armor Knight, Blue Dragon, Stone Man. But every seed can be different because enemies can have different abilities. Anyway, this has been Aaron to you too, and hopefully this video will help you get uh, a little bit better at DWR. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.